ready, Donna? Yep. I'd like to call the Gurney Village Board regular meeting of April 6, 2020 to order. Roll call. Hood. Here. Thorstenson. Here. Ross. Here. Garner. Here. O'Brien. Present. Balmas. Present. All here. All right, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. This is our second meeting under COVID-19 conditions. Um, thank you to the staff, the department heads, Pat, for everything that you guys are doing under very difficult circumstances, keeping our employees safe, but still keeping the village running. Um, I know these are very uncertain times, very trying times, and trying to support our residents and our businesses um, at the same time. And it's hard to be encouraging when there's not a lot of good news yet. Um, but we will get through it together and obviously with the, the masks and the social distancing and following everything the Lake County Health Department is telling us to do, we will come out the other side. So first thing is approval of the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Motion by Trustee Second. Balmas, second. second by Trustee O'Brien. Roll call please, Donna. <coughs> Hood. Yes. Thorstenson. Yes. Ross. Yes. Garner. Yes. O'Brien. Aye. Thomas. Aye. All ayes. All right, motion carries. Patrick, please read the consent agenda into the record. Sure, and before I do, I'll just stay for the public record. Items three through six on there uh, were all public bid um, projects or multi multiple quotes were received, and all these recommendations are for the low bidder uh, for each one of those projects. At number one, approval of the minutes from the March 23rd, 2020 Village Board meeting. At number two, approval of ordinance 2020-24, extending a moratorium on the establishment of smoke, vape, or hookah shops and or lounges. At number three, approval of awarding the 2020 Old Grand Water Main Replacement Phase One Project, Ferndale Street to First Street, to the low bidder, Joel Kennedy Constructing Corp, at a cost of $971,500. At number four, Approval of awarding the 2020 Ferndale Reconstruction Project, Grand Avenue to Route 41 to the low bidder, J.A. Johnson Paving at a cost of $570,800. At number five, approval of awarding the Westgate Sanitary Lift Station Pump Replacement Project, the low bidder, Grungfuss, CBS, Inc. at a cost of $25,300. At number six, approval of police department request to purchase five 2020 Chevrolet Tahoe state bid contract vehicles at a cost of $190,940. And number seven, approval of request to dispose of certain documents as authorized by the State of Illinois Local Records Commission. And number eight, approval of Community Service Officer Armando Martinez's request to participate in the Village's Tuition Assistance Program in pursuit of an Associate of Arts degree at the College of Lake County. And number nine, approval of payroll for, for period ending March 27, 2020 in the amount of $820,952.60. And number 10, approval of bills for period ending April 6, 2020 in the amount of $688,284.15. Thank you, Patrick. Do I have a motion to approve the so consent moved. agenda as read into the record? Well, motion by uh, Trustee Garner, second by Trustee Thorstenson. Roll call, please. Hood. Yes. Thorstenson. Yes. Ross. Aye. Garner. Aye. O'Brien. Aye. Thomas. Aye. All mm -hmm. ayes. All right, motion carries. We'll move on to petitions and communications. For the sake of brevity, I will not read them into the public record tonight. First one is approval of a proclamation designating April 12th through 18th, 2020 as National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week in the Village of Gurney. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Trustee Garner. Second by Trustee Ross. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thanks. All right. The National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week. Our next proclamation is approval of designating April as 911 Education Month in the Village of Gurney. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Motion Second. by Trustee Balmas. Second by Trustee O'Brien. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. April's 911 Public Education Month. 
And then our last one tonight is a proclamation designating April as Child Abuse Prevention Month and recognizing the Blue Kids Lake County Project. Do I have a motion so to moved. approve? Second. Motion by Trustee O'Brien, second by Trustee Ross. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, Child Abuse Prevention Month. Okay, uh, under reports, we are gonna have a presentation from Jack our assistant to the village administrator on our electrical aggregation program renewal options. Okay, thank you, Mayor and Village Board. So I wanted to walk you guys through a couple of our options that we have this year. It's a little different, so I wanted to get some feedback from the board for some direction for the next meeting. Just a quick overview of the program history. I know we know we come to this every year. Back in 2012, residents approved an opt-out program aggregates all residents, they're automatically in unless they sign that they want out. During this time, the winning bidder was the, uh, had the lower rate than ComEd, and we saved on average $425 per household over this time period. So it was a great government savings program. <coughs> the rate's no longer offered and no longer lower than ComEd's. And now new deals, they all don't include a community-wide opt-out. So whatever rate we select could be very risky. So in 2019, when we were kind of considering um, what our options were, other communities, um, Gray's Lake, Libertyville, some of our nearby communities, they've all opted out of their programs. They no longer run them. Um, MC Squared at this time came forward with a proprietary uh, product called EcoGreen. And what this is, it's 100% renewable energy certificates for everyone in the program, and it's 100% price match guarantee with comment. So I'll quick just go through how it works again. So if we look at, let's say these are 10 customers in the village of Gurney. So these 10 customers are lined up. This is based on kind of their usage. These off-peak customers, these are customers who they do everything right from a green perspective. They don't turn their AC on until it's 82 degrees. Um, they turn off all lights. They, they maybe work nights. They work off hours. These are the very profitable um, residents for an aggregation program. These customers up here, and I fall under this category myself, are ones who are less, um, you know, they keep the temperature at the set pace or the set level throughout the year. Um, they're not quite as profitable. So what they do is that green line there represents what a price program would show. So that's where they would, they would price the program at so that they lose, they lose some money, they gain some money, but overall it's a profitable program. How these programs work, so in a traditional aggregation, MC Squared, who is our current one, they would take the off-peak, so they'd take those profitable customers. They also had to take the not profitable customers. They had to take both. And then anyone who opted out would go to ComEd. The new program, how it works and how it's, essentially what's the, the catch, is they only take the off-peak customers who are profitable. So they get to pick and choose who they get. The rest of them, they put them over to ComEd. Um, so both the opt-out customers and the peak customers go to ComEd. Now the thing is, is for even those ComEd residents, 100% of the electric they use, MC Squared buys back renewable energy to replenish the grid. So let's say your household is one of these opt-out, or one of these peak customers, and you use 1,000 kilowatts of energy, you're drawing from the grid. What they do is they put back into the grid 1,000 kilowatts of uh, wind energy primarily that they buy credits for. So what it looks like when you get your bill, so it doesn't matter if you're with ComEd or MC Squared, your bill, let's say, is $145.87. As you can see, there's some ways that it breaks down differently, but for both of the customers, it's identical. So they both pay the same rate. Um, it's just kind of priced out a little differently. What this means for our annual carbon reduction for the Village of Gurney is essentially it's the same as reducing 171 million miles of passenger cars that we took off the road. Um, from a coal perspective, or 76 million pounds of coal that we saved in the last year by doing this program. And to kind of further, I guess, give it credence, so the EPA, what they do is they recognize the greenest cities in the country. They have a list of 100 communities um, that are essentially the most renewable. In our first year in the program, and we didn't complete a whole year, we ranked number 30 in the nation. And this was above communities like I mean, Park City, Utah, or other communities that are known for being renewable, they spend lots of money. They have entire departments dedicated to renewable energy, and we still 
beat them because of this program. Um, so we used 93 million kilowatts of renewable wind energy in the village of Gurney. So overall, it's a decent program. It costs residents nothing more than having if they were just with ComEd, um, and it's a good green project. <coughs> now, so this is where it got different. MC Squared, when they developed the program, they were the sole person who had it. This last year, Allegro Energy, they came into the marketplace, and so now what happens is if it's a price match at ComEd, they can't beat each other on price. Price is going to just be what ComEd is. It's safe for them. Where they're able to do differentiate is they now have what's called a civic contribution. So what this is, is this is money essentially that they pay to the municipality for the right for the bid. So when we had originally received both the bids, uh, you know, MC Squared we've been with for quite a while, they proposed 50,000. Allegio at the time proposed 110,000 civic contribution. When we were looking at it, the switch was not necessarily worth it a few months ago. We were going to recommend that we go with MC Squared due to a couple of features I'll share. But on Wednesday, when the bids came back in, Allegio, who had just lost two recent bids to MC Squared, even though outbidding MC Squared, uh, they upped the game. And so they offered 175,000 uh, in civic contribution. So I just wanted to quick walk through a couple of the pros and cons and kind of what to consider, and hopefully the board can give a little bit of direction as to what you're thinking. So if we look at the pros and cons, MC Squared, we've been with this company for four years. Residents know the name. Um, it's trusted. Their call centers are out of Chicago. They founded this program. They have, I think, over a dozen clients in the Illinois area. The closest to us is Round Lake Beach, and they enjoy the program as well. Um, actually, we've been getting called throughout the year from other communities looking for us to see if they wanted to do the program as well. Um, great customer service. Five-star company. This is an actual rating that they're given. Um, the cons is that they're offering $50,000. Um, Allegro Energy, so the pros of them is they're offering $175,000, significantly more. Um, some of their recent clients that they just got an aggregation, this program with, Aurora, Illinois, which is the second largest municipality in Illinois, and Arlington Heights. Um, their call center also is out of Chicago. So some of the information I've kind of learned just in the last few days, they're actually a four-star company. So they have, which is above, av four and five-star are above average for normal complaints. Now the con, and this is kind of the only reason there's any hesitation, otherwise it would be a pretty clear decision. Um, they were cited and they were kind of essentially made an example of by the Attorney General as one of the companies. Uh, as we know, um, a lot of, there are scammers out there. There's companies that do some bad practices by signing residents up door to door um, at a rate that is higher than the ComEd rate. Uh, Allegio back in 2013 was when this occurred. They hired a third party calling company to help drive sales. The calling company didn't disclose the right legal things. Uh, Allegio noticed this themselves. They laid off the calling company, closed that division of their branch, but they still worked with the Attorney General, had a $1 million fine from the Attorney General and one or three companies that were um, kind of made an example of from, from the Attorney General. So there is some risk of a negative PR uh, when Aurora did the renewal, there was no negative PR. It went fine. Arlington Heights, who just renewed in October, um, there was a story, and so I just wanted to share this too. Um, so this was the headline in the Daily Herald, you know, that they had to defend the deal as to why they're working with this company that had, in the term, you know, a little bit of a, a negative reputation. Um, and then here's another headline too, that essentially that they were one of the um, companies that was slapped with the fine. So one of the things, and kind of why I'm bringing this to you, I guess, and where a decision is, is, again, a few months ago, this was an easy choice. Um, we're with MC Squared. We've worked with them for a while. Good, solid company. No confusion with residents. However, one thing now as we look at this is Allegro still can do the contract. Our residents aren't going to be put into some sort of scam. This, we have done all the legals in the background with our uh, consultant, so they're going to be protected. This isn't a a scam for them. They're going to get good customer service with the Legio. Um, and one of the things that we can consider is essentially we can use this ex additional $125,000 worth of funding for stuff like, like the Blue Ribbon Commission projects. If we could put $125,000 more in one year towards uh, biking and other uh, initiatives, or like Arlington Heights, they're using that money to install electric <coughs> charging stations in their downtown. So it can be used for a variety of ways. They could earmark it. Um, we could do quite a bit with it. And again, 
There may be negative PR with it, but it would be short term if there is. Um, but I can see either there's, there's pros and cons to each as I weighed. So I just wanted to see if there was some board feedback into which direction to consider. All right, Trustee Hood. they've done and how they've made right I mean from our perspective I think we'd be able to meet those objections and uh, gain that opportunity and if for some reason it doesn't work out right it's a one-year commitment it doesn't mean that we stay with them more than one year so uh, I think it uh, to me it's worth the risk I think based on being being slapped and fined I think uh, they're they're less likely to do it a second time and I think that uh, the dollars, you know, I mean, $175,000, who couldn't use that today? Um, and and I, as long as we can guarantee our residents that we, they will receive the energy without interruption, I think we'll, we're okay. All right, uh, Trustee O'Brien. I concur with the other trustees, but I also would like to know, uh, one place it said that, that uh, part of why they got a four star rating is because they had a lower level of service. <coughs> Everyone's going to get power, I assume, so what would be that lower level of service? And um, is there a way that we can quantify it to them that we expect a better level of service? Sure. Yeah, and that's one of, one of the things. So their, their rating is based on the company in general. So it's their whole portfolio. Um, like any you know large company, they have different divisions. Aggregation is its own division. So there's this, you know, they have their own uh, dedicated staff towards an aggregation <coughs> program. From what I've actually heard um, and from what I've saw for Aurora, I actually went and made sure I looked at their community websites to see what type of information are there. They have a dedicated email, so people email aurora at alejo.com if they have any issues. Uh, they also can call and they have a dedicated phone number for them, which is important that we're not directing residents to a general 1-800 number. MC squared, what would happen? It's not often, but every now and then residents would mid-year want to join the program or they'd have a question or an issue. Um, they've been great to work with and that I can give the residents say, hey, here's their number, give them a call, and they can help answer questions. Um, but I've been given you know, clear, or assurance from our uh, broker, NIMAC, that Allegro still, they still have that level of service, everything's available, um, and they've been really good and they've been doing a good job, I guess, with the aggregation markets. But they still are rated a four star versus a five star. Thank you. Trustee Thorstenson. I have a similar question. And so now what you're seeing is some ratings still that are based upon um, conserver ratings. So your customers and you know what is the denominator and those. And then it sounds like how you're seeing your service is more of a, I'll call it a risk rating, but it's more of an aggregate of their services, like we are saying in email. Yeah, I would, I would think that's probably where it comes from. So some of it does come from the Illinois Commerce Commission too. So what they'll do is they'll get complaints that essentially that they, um, an issue with them. So a lot of, the majority of their market is, are the door-to-door -door sales, you would say. So you know, when you're, or like if you're at a different stores and you see them selling or they come to your door, or you get the letters, that's how they do the majority of their business. So they'll get one contract at a time. They'll lock you in, let's say, at a 10 cents a kilowatt for three years. Um, they'll get you a certain rate at, for a certain period of time. That's where a lot of their ratings are coming from. So that drives the, the rating. This, it's kind of tough because that's their official rating. But the aggregation, um, is a, you get a different level of, a, of customer service for it. And I'll just add, we've worked with NIMEC for the last 15 years, so they know what we expect as far as customer service out of our supplier. They've been good to work with when we've had issues. They've jumped in and, and helped us. One of the things that Jack and I also debated back and forth was this civic contribution. Could that be passed on to the residents in the form of savings on their electric bill? Based on the number of accounts we have, you're looking at probably a dollar to a dollar fifty per month saving on someone's electric bill. They're not going to notice that. 
Therefore, we could use the money, like Jack said, for something like the Blue Ribbon Committee. We could extend some bike paths or sidewalks or something that everyone in the community could have a chance to realize and benefit from for years to come. So, Trustee Ross? Are they still uh, in the green system, too, like MC Square? Yeah, so it also will be 100% renewable energy. So we'll still be eligible for the same ratings, um, and we'll still provide 100% renewable energy credits. So, yes. Trustee Balmas? And just, you, you basically said it, but just to clarify, that money does not have to be designated for something towards electric or whatever. I mean, if we needed to use it someplace else, it's not. Yep. Okay. Trustee O'Brien. I have one other, in regards to that civic contribution, um, it's, it probably should be pointed out if we do this, that there is no additional cost for either com com company for the residents, because it, it could look unusual to, that we're picking a company that's giving us $175,000. Yeah, and that, that's, that's part of the, the, you know, the uncomfort with it. So to give kind of a, a good example too, last year, MC Squared offered us a $50,000 civic contribution if we did 50% renewable credits. And at the time, we said we'd rather do 100% renewable. But now it's gotten to the point that it's still, it's still decently profitable. And so that's always where people wonder, where, where is this money coming from? It's coming from the fact that they're, in one fell swoop, are going to sign up 10,000 new customers rather than going door to door to door trying to get people to sign up. They're getting 10,000 dedicated accounts, and they get, to pick and, they get to see their energy profile ahead of time, and they pick and choose who they want and the rest of them, they move over to ComEd. And if you're moved over to ComEd, um, if you didn't opt out of the program and you're using you know, 10,000 kilowatts of electric, 100% of that's still renewable, even with, your, with ComEd, because they're still able to, again, by using those profit margins, dedicate it back to buying these energy credits. So. Thank you. All right, do you have enough? Yeah, uh, so I'll, I'll be bringing a recommendation on the 20th for Allegro Energy. All right. Big change ahead. All right, no other reports? Uh, I'll, I'll just add that um, we fired up the uh, ambient air sampling canisters again this past weekend. So Medline got their improvements in place. They got the okay from the state to start up. Again, so our final 30 days of air sampling has started. So a month from now, well, a month from now it'll end. We'll have the results after that, which we will share with the public and then forward on to the ATSDR. Thank you. All right. Um, so no old business. Correct. We'll move on to new business. Oh, there it is. Um, first item is approval of resolution 2020. Zero four. 04, declaring a local state of emergency in the village gurney due to the coronavirus disease 2019. It was previously signed, but I do need the board's concurrence and vote. So do I have a motion so to moved. approve? Motion by Trustee O'Brien, second by Trustee Ross. Roll call, please. Hood. Yes. Thorstenson. Yes. Ross. Aye. Garner. Aye. O'Brien. Aye. Thomas. Aye. All ayes. All right, motion carries. Um, this will make us eligible for any public assistance that's made available through some of these stimulus packages and the disaster declarations, and it gives the department heads the authority to act on certain things that are considered an emergency. So we have done these before, just not under these circumstances. Uh, the next, so that carries. Uh, next item, item number two, approval of resolution 2020. 05, authorizing maintenance and improvements of streets and highways under the Illinois Highway Code. This is our 2020 motor fuel tax program. Yeah, so Brian alluded to this a little bit. So our initial plan was to only spend um, MFT funds every other year, let those funds accumulate, and then supplement the road program uh, based on what we're expecting here with the impact of sales tax. Um, staff is recommending that we um, spend some MFT funds um, this upcoming year, that'll allow us to not do the $675,000 transfer from the general fund to the capital fund, and then also supplement some of the home rule sales tax that we're expecting to decline. So we've approved this same resolution in the past. It's required by the state. 
that basically gives a dollar amount as far as what we expect to spend in MFT funds. Uh, we put in $1 million and then just um, binds us to filing all the appropriate uh, paperwork with the state of Illinois as far as how the funds were spent. Um, as Brian talked about, the first budget amendment that comes forward um, to you, which will be at the next board meeting, we'll make these adjustments in the budget as far as the 675, the spend a million um, in MFT funds. So this will allow us to move forward with our capital program um, as we presented back in December as it relates to the roadways. All right, questions from the trustees? Make a motion to approve. I have a motion by Thank Trustee you. Bowman, second by Trustee Thorstenson. All, uh, roll call, please, Donna. Hood? Yes. Thorstenson? Yes. Ross? Aye. Garner? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Bombas? Aye. All ayes. All right, that resolution passes. Item number three, approval of resolution 2020-06, authorizing an emergency appropriation to Golf Visions Management for operations at the Village Bittersweet Golf Course. Patrick. Sure. So the golf course was looking like it was going to make it through the winter and had some rounds actually played in uh, December and March and was shaping up to be in good shape for the start of the season. And then COVID-19 hit and the <laughs> state closed the courses, then had them open for a day or two and then decided to again to close them through April 30th. So um, Golf Visions manages uh, the Bittersweet Golf Course for us. It's a flat management fee, um, annual fee of $39,000. Uh, we had a memo from uh, Kathy Ralston, the general manager out there, kind of laying out how they got to this point. Um, they had $33,000 in cash um, at the end of March. April expenses are usually around $60,000 to $70,000 of that, about $35,000 is in payroll. So you can see um, that they would be short. They've asked for uh, some assistance to uh, fund uh, the next payroll. This initial ask was based on the course opening up um, in mid-April, obviously that's not going to happen. Um, she was initially asking for $17,000 worth of assistance. Um, staff drafted the resolution to give us authority up to 50. Um, we would obviously only transfer um, to Bittersweet what is needed. Um, we, in the uh, budget that's uh, next on the agenda for consideration, we have $235,000 in expenditures on the golf course fund. This was for capital improvements, but the uh, proposal by staff is to shift some of that funding from capital to operations. So that 235 um, would become 185 available for capital if the uh, full 50 was spent. Um, the money will be transferred to a account that both um, Gulf Visions and the Village have access to, um, so we can keep track of that. Um, as I said, Kathy's request was made before um, the stay-at-home order was expanded till the end of April. I've been in contact with her, with her since then as far as coming up with additional reductions that can be made out of the course um, to help reduce how much we need to transfer out there. But obviously, I mean, a golf course needs constant care, especially when the growing season's uh, going to get started here. So we want to be able to help them out to make sure that when this opens back up, um, they're going to be ready to hit the ground running. So as I said, we're looking, staff's looking for authority up to $50,000 uh, in funding, which would come out of the uh, funds that were budgeted in, in the golf course fund under the capital line item. Questions for Pat? Make a Trustee motion Garner. to approve. Oh, wait, Trustee Garner. Oh, sorry. Have we looked at a worst case scenario on this thing? No one knows how long Corona is going to last. Um, you know, if it goes beyond the fifty thousand dollar mark, uh, have we looked at or discussed? Well, it'll go um, beyond the fifteen thousand because that was just to help them with this next payroll here. Um, so they're going to have an additional one after that. She was hoping that if they could get open uh, May first, while it would impact their cash flow, they wouldn't need um, more than basically two payrolls worth. The payroll was um, about well. The 35 is what she had listed, but again, I talked with her about trying to bring that number down for the second half of April so we wouldn't have to transfer as much. Um, when they first took over uh, Gulf Visions, we did have to um, help them out with some funding. It was $100,000, and they did pay that back to the village. This would be no different, same arrangement. If they need beyond the 50, then obviously I'm back before you, and we're having a serious discussion on what to do out there at the golf course. 
Okay, I, I was just wondering if there had been any discussion on that because she's working on that right now. Yeah, we don't know. <clears throat> Other questions? All right, I had a motion from Trustee second. Balmas, second from Trustee Garner. Roll call, please. Donna? Hood? Yes. Thorstenson? Yes. Ross? Aye. Garner? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Balmas? Aye. All ayes. All right, that resolution passes. Item number four, approval of ordinance 2020 Approving the annual budget of the Village of Gurnee, County of Lakes, State of Illinois, for the fiscal year beginning May 1st, 2020, and ending April 30th, 2021. What? Oh, I thought you, somebody was correcting you. All right, so this, we, rec we had our public hearing. We had a recommendation to ourselves. So do I have a motion to no, approve move. the budget? Second. Motion by Trustee Balmas. Second. Second by Trustee Thorstenson. Roll call, please. Hood? Yes. Thorstenson? Yes. Ross? Aye. Garner? Uh, O'Brien? Aye. Balmas? Aye. All ayes. Motion carries. God bless us. All right, item number five. Approval of ordinance 2020-26. Approving the purchase of real estate located at 4609, 4611, 4617, and 4625 Old Grand Avenue. Sure, so we talked about this uh, back in January in executive session. <clears throat> uh, the owner of this parcel uh, appro approached us interested in selling it. Um, these, the two buildings on uh, these properties rank number five and seven on our floodplain property priority list. For our market value of 381,000, uh, we reached an agreed upon purchase price of 275,000. Um, at the time we talked about, uh, we believed there would be some uh, surplus funding in the capital fund that wouldn't be spent um, this current fiscal year. That turned out to be about $560,000. So we'll be able to uh, purchase, the, purchase this property without any uh, major impacts um, to the budget, what was included in the approved budget for this year. Um, there are some, Leases out there um, that are currently still in place. Um, we have one that goes through May 31st of this year, one this month, month, one through April 30th, and then the longest through January 31st of 2021. So um, as you can see, a lot of those are coming up and will be done here in the next uh, month or so. The third lease um, that's out there that goes till next year will obviously work with that um, party. I know they are looking to relocate someplace else in town, but we will be a good landlord to them until they reach that point in time or unless they want to uh, get out of there earlier. So um, once the buildings are vacated, they'll be uh, removed and it'll be returned to open space. This will save a lot of money. Questions from the trustees? To approve. Motion by Trustee Ross, <coughs> second by Trustee Garner. Roll call please, Donna. Hood. Yes. Thorstenson? Yes. Ross? Aye. Garner? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Thomas? Aye. All ayes. All right. Motion carries. Item number six is approval of ordinance 2020-27, granting a special use permit pursuant to the Gurney Zoning Ordinance for 4710 through 5710 West Desplaines Place to allow the establishment and operation of a vehicle dealership with outdoor sales, storage, and repair, and I believe the petitioner is going to be on the phone. Yes. Oh, okay. You want to walk us through that? Welcome, Hi. sir. It's a little unusual circumstances, but we'll get through this. So uh, David is going to walk us through the uh, petition. Thank you, Mayor. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, the uh, proposed property is the former AAA Tent Masters property down on Des Plaines Court. Uh, um, at the intersection with uh, Illinois Route 120. Uh, the current occupant is requesting a special use permit uh, to, um, for outdoor display of vehicles. Uh, his business that he's moving in there is a bus, uh, used bus uh, reseller. Uh, they do some minor work on the buses while they're on the, the lot to uh, improve their value. Um, and basically they need 
think their proposal was for like five stalls for the display of those buses along the Route 120 uh, frontage. There will be a new small pavement pad that they will install uh, with some landscaping around it to uh, highlight those buses on that lot. And the petitioner, Mr. Anthony Baccarello is on the phone if you have any other specific questions. And this would occupy the whole building, right? Pardon? This is going to occupy the whole building. This will occupy the entire building that was the, the AAA Tent Masters building, yes. Okay. All right, questions from the trustees? My, <coughs> Garner. My question has to do with the aesthetics of the property after the fact. Is it going to look any significantly better than it currently looks? The building that's on the corner, the, the small one-story building, has a, you know, it, it's in decent shape. Um, they're not proposing to do any major modifications to the building. Uh, the only major modification that's out there is the addition of the parking, parking lot for the display of the buses. I mean, it looks pretty shabby down there right now. So the question is, uh, is it going to look better, significantly which, better than it currently looks? Which building? Um, I'm talking about the overall property. It, it look, from, the, from the drawings that we received, it looks like it's, it's, um, it looks like it's going to be an improvement. I mean, some of this is hand drawn, but uh, yeah. uh, you know, it, I'm, my concern is is that you know we improve the space right. um, the, at the end of the day. Right. The applicant only has control of the one-story building that's uh, featured in the photograph that has the sign on it. Uh, the hangar that sits back behind it, the kind of the, the uh, boat truss roof uh, structure, pole barn is not under his control. That still remains with the property owner. Okay. So is it going to look more like a dealership at the end of the day, or is it just going to be some lipstick on, on, on a dressed up pig? I mean, what's trying to get a feel for what we're doing down there. I get that we're going to sell buses and repair buses and do that thing, but is it going to be, I'd like to see an improvement is what I'm getting at. There's going to be some additional landscaping around the new parking lot that will be added. Uh, the, there's no proposed modifications or improvements to any of the structures out there. Yeah, this didn't come in as a building permit for a development. To, it, allows, it allows the use, but not for yeah, outdoor for sales and sales. stuff. So that's mm -hmm. the special use. Trustee, Gun or Trustee of Vine. Um, I saw the plans. So once they're built, or once they put the buses out there and start selling, it's a nice revenue generator for the village. I assume we get a tax on the hundred thousand dollar buses that are being sold. Yes. Thank you. Trustee Thorstenson. Second. All right, I have a motion from Trustee Hood and a second from Trustee O'Brien. Is there any other discussion before I call for a vote? All right, roll call please, Donna. Hood. Yes. Thorstenson. Yes. Ross. Aye. Garner. Aye. O'Brien. Aye. Hollis. Aye. All ayes. All right, motion carries. Welcome to the village, Mr. Vaccarella. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You'll work with staff, and we'll get you going. Thank you Perfect. for joining thank you us so much. tonight. Yes, thank you for joining Abs us this way tonight. Absolutely. Thank you very much. I All appreciate right. it. Bye-bye. Okay. That is the end of our new business. We have no public, so I'm not even opening the floor for public comment. Um, but we do have an executive session tonight.
We're going to do it out here. Everybody's going to leave. We're going to turn the cameras off. Yeah, we'll get the audio set up, so give us a couple minutes to get it all ready yeah. for you. But so you do I reason. have... Oh, yeah, we need to have a motion, a oh, that's vote. Right. The exemption will be under 3-1 to discuss um, and review the compensation of a specific employee. Okay, so do I have a motion, motion. to go into executive session? So moved. Motion, motion by Trustee Garner, second by Trustee Ross. Oh, Trustee Thorstenson, sorry. <laughs> Roll call, please. Hood. Yes. Thorstenson. Yes. Ross. Garner. Aye. O'Brien. Aye. Thomas. Aye. All right, we're going into executive session. We're going to stay here. 